Hello everyone. In tonight's video I'm going to show you how to tie this fly and this is just uh, something that occurred to me today and I was I just wanted to share it with you uh, and uh, this is I'll just show my flow of thoughts how it went uh, so I'm going to show you how I draw the, this fly today and what it came after it so as you will see I'm using uh, materials as listed here for the hook I'm going to use Gamakatsu R17 3FT which is super thin in size 18 for the thread I'm using Semperfly 18-0 30 denier in dark green which is very thin I like it because of that for the body I'm going to use stripped peacock quill for the wings I'm going to use parapost wing in light grey which is quite nice and it has nice almost translucent color to make Modora's wings a little bit more spicy I'm going to use this purple flash for the thorax I'm going to use peacock dubbing extra fine for the legs I'm going to use grizzly cape hackle so without any further ado let's just hop into tying I'll start with placing hook in the vise and because this is 3x or 3 times fine barbless hook as you can see here uh, I just want to be sure that uh, I'm not going to it's not gonna wobble too much while I'm tying which is actually quite impossible to achieve but if I place it like this it's gonna wobble like crazy but if I catch it here because I'm not going to go into the bend so much I'm going to be able to tie the fly properly and it's going to be more sturdy while I'm tying for the thread obviously because I'm using such a small and tiny hook I'm going to use Semperfly as I already showed you and it's like slippery it's GSP so there are a couple of options you can do uh, I don't like option number one which is super glue and I like option number two which is uh, some wax which I cannot find around me so I'm gonna do it without it Anyway, just start with flat thread and I'll, instead of just going overlapping this way because it's going to, as you can see, it's going to slide. I'm just going to, with flat thread, go a couple of wraps to the front and then overlap everything and go back. Now, if I pull now, it's going to be okay. It's going to stay there. But I'll just make a couple of more wraps. Now, instead of cutting like this, slice it. So go with your scissors through it. Obviously I'm matching hook with a thread. Now material for the body is going to be matched again. And this material is one of the most beautiful materials ever. As you can see it's quill, pick your quill, but I'm going to use the other way. This side. Well, actually I'm going to strip it. And just to demonstrate what I'm talking about instead of I mean you can always buy those they're not too expensive but it's super easy if you wanted to if you just want to do it yourself so this part here that goes near the rachis of the of the peacock feather is the most tough as you go towards the tip it breaks easily so just break it a couple of times like so and then when you take it with your nail and you go down it it's gonna strip easily now there are a couple of things you need to know about this if the feather is older it's going to be uh, more brittle and uh, also if your nails are not let's say polished I mean the edge if you just cut your nails the edge is going to be super sharp and it may damage the, the barb uh, so just take care of that to file it a little bit or whatever anyway the second thing I wanted to show you is that if you go if you take the barb from the eye of the feather it's going to have more contrasty colors but if you take the barb from the lower part of the feather it's going to have less contrast now I'm going to use this one that has less contrast 
but I'm going to cover body of the fly like so. Now you can go a little bit into the bed, I just slightly like it's almost impossible to see. And I'm just gonna take it, I'm gonna counter spin my thread so it jumps into my fingers as you can see here. Now it's definitely not important for this fly where you're going to place this barb but for some other flies I'm gonna counter spin it again to make it even more again flat it is not important but like if you're going to place the wire and so so on and so forth uh, you're gonna f you should take into account where you're gonna place the barb I'm gonna show you that into probably one of the videos that are going to follow now make sure that you're gonna leave enough room for this so you need a relatively short body and relatively let's say big thorax because uh, if you take a look I'm just gonna place the photo of the of the midge somewhere on the screen somewhere around and so you can see like it has a relatively thin body and quite emphasized thorax and then there there's a head which I can represent with the hook eye so I'm just gonna take hackle pliers and catch this barb and go slowly around my my hook now you can use a rotational function of your vise you don't have to I usually don't do it I'm gonna try to not to do it again because the lens is too close here now, as you can see I'm getting this segmentation colored segmentation and what I actually like the most is that because I used very thin hook and very thin thread I'm getting very thin body so as you can see this is going to be a very delicate fly in a way oops and I thought this is going to hold anyway, anyway never, never mind I'm gonna just do the rotational oops it's breaking the, the, the and I'm not pulling too much I, I got new I got new hackle pliers which are uh, the, I forgot the name I'm gonna write it somewhere and they hold well but I think I just applied too much I set it up too much too tight I guess anyway I was telling that this uh, barb uh, I'm gonna go back a little bit like so because I was telling I need some space here and so that's it I'm gonna catch it with one and one in front and then I'm gonna cut it as close as possible and with my next thread wrap I'm gonna cover this patent now I can add some UV and I probably should because uh, as you can see the barb is a little bit broken here but I'm gonna add my old trusty super glue and I'm going to collect the excess excess super glue with my botkin like this I'm using this part which is not covered with glue so what I just did I placed a little bit of super glue all over it this one dries very quickly it's 502 you can buy it in some Chinese stores if you want it is going to, going to allow me to protect the, the barb over here because it broke and I'm I have to, to admit I'm a little bit lazy to remove it and tie another one. Now, I'm gonna take Grizzly Hackle and prepare it. So, remove all the webby part from it and then just 
remove these barbs a little bit. Now you have shiny and dull side, so dull, dull and shiny side of the feather. So if you want shiny side to face forward, place shiny side to face downwards and place the rakes like so. So I'm putting it like sideways as you can see here and then in touching turns I'm not doing turn one on the top of another I'm doing touching touching turns so one next to each other uh, I'm gonna cut this barb now did I? yeah it seems okay so I'm gonna place it and secure it here mm. Yeah, I need to remove a little bit more, I guess. So, uh, okay, good. That's why it's good to have some fine pointy scissors. You can go very close. Now, as I told you already, I'm using this power post thing for the wings, and that's, this is definitely too much, as you can see. So I'm just gonna take away like super tiny amount and if you think you have quite enough, remove one or two. So I'm gonna prepare this. So I'm going to attach those wings. And as you can see, if you counter spin your thread, the thread is going to jump into your fingers and you don't need to fight it. So I have one, two. Well, because this is just developing fly. So, I have another idea. I'm gonna take the flash and I'm going to save some wraps over here. So, let's do this from the start. I'm gonna place the flash together with poly yarn because there is no need to do it separately. As you can see I'm doing one side right now. Then I'm gonna fold this into another side and create the shape like so. And if you can see it here it's a little bit blurry. It's not autofocus but you, you, you see enough I think. Let's see it like this. As you can see here I want to cover up until here. So, all thorax until the body. So that's what I need to cover me with my thread. And flat thread is imperative here. I just did it. So, okay, thread, uh, hackle is fine. Now it's time to take some dubbing, extra fine peacock dubbing, and take as little as you can. And if you think you have enough, take a little bit less. This is what I have. And in clockwise direction, dub this on your thread. And you're gonna, going to get a noodle that's what, maybe a centimeter and a half long? Maybe like that. I'm not sure, like, that's it. But you, you'll need to develop a sense, sense of feeling, a hunch for this and create a little thorax here that's quite distinct compared to the body over here like you can see the contrast in thickness and I also left quite a bit of hook here and I'm gonna cover it with thread counter spin go back because I'm gonna catch my hackle over here and look at this. I'm going to go just relatively dense with hackle. And when I jump off the dubbing, I'm also going to catch my hackle here. One, two, and because this hook is so soft, let's call it soft, it's it it works, it moves. 
I'm gonna place my nail and just tighten this a little bit and then I'm gonna place one or two locking wraps in front then again don't cut just push your scissors into this to prevent cutting the the hackle barbs now the reason why I tie this in V shape which is a little bit ruined we just see which way it goes yeah it's like this I'm just gonna stretch it a little bit here and then take dubbing needle or whatever you can to help you create the the length of the wings you want and this is what I need I want a little bit longer wings and let me hold this here now it's again a very crucial that you have counter spin your thread so because if it's not it's just gonna jump and fall off the hook fall off the eye and fall off the eye if you have it counter spun it's going to place right where it belongs two three now I'm gonna catch my hook again and pull down with my thread to lock everything in place and this should be it let me see if I close the eye now it's going to be fine yep it's going to be fine now, oops this one I didn't catch which is okay I can just cut it and now because you can use super glue to put here and just make it a little bit more secure I don't want to do that I just I'm just going to place two whip finishes here so one is going to be on the top of this one like so so one two three and then pull back to secure everything and the other one or two is going to be here and I'm gonna push with this thread I'm gonna push and as you can see I'm like using so many reps this will finish here is not to secure anything else but to lift this front part up and lock it here so it won't pull out now everything that's left is to uh, cut the thread you can cut this close or you can leave a little tag I just like the tag it's super slow uh, super small as you can see but I cut it by an angle so it looks ugly a little bit now um, dubbing needle and I'm going to just see where are my wings and then push them apart and I'm gonna pull a little bit stronger like so I'm gonna break this off and then go with your scissors just like here and don't do it at once like so now go a little bit little by little And then just create V shape like more or less like this, like my scissors over here. Like so. Or you can even make it flat. But I like this. So when the fly lands on the surface, it's gonna stretch a little bit more, I guess. That's just the idea. So this is concept beta version of the fly and it's quite delicate as you can see now look at this look how nice it looks from the bottom it has that nice shine it doesn't have too much too many of those wings it's like quite sparse and those legs are slightly oversized i forgot to discuss it those midges like they have quite long legs so i don't want to make small legs for this and also uh, longer legs that go to the sides are going to hold your fly better on the surface obviously this fly is delicate doesn't have much buoyant materials on it actually it's only hackle but you can see it here they said it's treated with watershed meaning that it's buoyant it is but I don't know that's why I also use this this very small hook 
tiny hook and thin hook. It's not super strong, I don't recommend it for bigger fish, unless you're going to fight fish and maybe kill it that way. But for some fish up to, I don't know, 30-40 centimeters, it's going to be quite fine. Uh, so, just to make it more interesting, I don't like this color of the thread, I'm going to place a little bit of black marker on the head and the black one is going to make a little bit of contrast as well not super contrasty but it's still nice to see so obviously because this fly is so sparse uh, it's not buoyant, super buoyant at least you should use some floatant with this as you prefer I don't have my favorite one definitely because I don't use them almost ever but any kind of oily, greasy stuff is going to work, I guess. Uh, recently a friend of mine used some spray that has just puts a white thing like you, that that fire ex ex extinguisher. It looks like that, it like, it like white foamy thing over your fly. But when you do a couple of false casts, it uh, just goes away and your fly floats like a cork. So I don't know which one is it. I'm gonna take a look and maybe buy it. Now, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like, share, subscribe. It helps my channel grow. And thank you very much for your time again, and see you next week.